All right, can uh, everybody hear me? Go ahead and put uh, something in the chat box if you can, if you can hear me. Can everybody hear me? Cool. All right, well, um, welcome to our first uh, virtual chat. I'm gonna try to keep everyone muted just because I feel like that's gonna be a better experience for everybody. Um, so if you wanna interact, please feel free to do so in the, uh, in the chat room. Um, I'll let you decide whether or not you want to share your video. I see some of you already are, but I am going to keep everybody muted. So uh, please do feel free to interact in the chat room. Um, basically today we're just going to have a little bit of fun with some trivia questions and uh, talk a little bit also about some library events that are happening. So uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm going to go, this is how I imagine this is going to work. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and it's going to have a PowerPoint presentation with the questions. Um, there's going to be 20 questions and we're going to go through the whole uh, batch of 20 questions. They're all book related and then um, then the second half of the hour we'll do the, uh, the answers. Now you're welcome to answer these questions on your own. Um, uh, if you want to have a little team, it's up to you. We're just, you know, obviously we can't give out prizes, so this is just about having some fun and interacting with people while the library is closed right now to the public. So um, if you want to have a, have a team, feel free to throw in the chat box of your team name or whatever, but um, we're going to have you keep your own score, so it's an honor system. And then at the end, when we go through the answers, then you can just kind of let everybody know what your score was and we can, we can see who won. Any questions? Everybody good? All right. Well, I am going to, uh, looks like some more people are coming in. So let me let some more people in here. All right. We have a couple new people. So I'm just going to go real quick over the rules. 20 questions. Uh, we're going to go through all the questions first. And then we're going to go through all the answers. It's an honor system. If you want to be in a team, that's cool. If not, that's cool as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen with the PowerPoint. Um, oh, yeah, I'm going to try to keep everybody muted. Um, and then if you want to share your camera, that's fine. I don't you know. That's up to you. But I am going to try to keep everybody muted and go ahead and use the chat room if you need to share something. So. Um, all right, give me one second here. Let me get my PowerPoint up. Okay, cool. Can everybody see this? Awesome. All right. So let's get started. Um, Wait, well, actually, before we get started, I just want to make one real quick announcement. Um, well, actually, I think maybe our director is here. <laughs> I think maybe Kristen's here. Uh, so go ahead. Feel free to make announcement about books, flights, and bids, Kristen. If you okay. Hi, all. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, so sorry that the library is closed. We are um, all really hoping to see everybody soon. But we do an annual fundraiser um, every year during National Library Week, which um, this year our fundraiser would have been on April 17th. Um, however, that has been postponed indefinitely until we can figure out, you know, when a good time is to gather again as a large group. But um, when we can gather as a large group, the library will have a party for the community. So thank you. All right, thanks for sharing that information with us, Kristen, and we are definitely looking forward to that party when it, when it happens. All right, so the first question uh, is, whoops. Poet Lawrence Ferlanghetti is one of the founders of what iconic San Francisco bookstore 
that is known as alternative culture's only literary landmark? That is the first question, question about a bookstore. If anybody's been there, uh, feel free to talk about it. I have, I liked it a lot. It's been a couple of years, actually been about 10 years. So <laughs> it's a great place, so. Okay, question two. Uh, in this 2019 movie, so this was last year, was based on a book by, I don't really know how to say this name, but Christine Luenens. What is the movie called? So last year there was a movie released based on a book by someone called Kristen Luenens. And we're looking for the name of that book. Or I'm sorry, the name of that movie. Give you guys a couple minutes to think about that. I'm gonna take a drink of water. All right, the next question. This South African writer who won a Nobel Prize in Literature recently challenged convention by deciding to release a Spanish translation of one of his novels before the English version. What is this person's name? So he uh, wrote in English. Oh, I just gave away their gender, but uh, wrote in English and released uh, the Spanish translation before the original. Caused kind of a stir. Question four, in 1922, Collier's Magazine published his story, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, also a movie. Who was he? So who was the person that wrote The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, published in 1922 in Collier's Magazine? Okay, this one uh, surprised me when I found out the answer to this. I had no idea, but Arthur Miller, known for writing Death of a Salesman, married which actress in 1956? Arthur Miller, the playwright known for Death of a Salesman, married which actress in 1956? All right, question six. Who is the Colombian author known for work such as News of a Kidnapping, The General in His Labyrinth, and Clandestine in Chile? We're looking for the name of a Colombian author who's known for, among other things, News of a Kidnapping, The General in His Labyrinth, and Clandestine in Chile. You probably know him from other titles, but these are some of his works as well. All right, next question. This former children's librarian is the first African-American and first woman to lead the Library of Congress. Who is she? And I know that Kristen's gonna know the answer to this one. <laughs> and if we have any other librarians or library workers on the, on the call, I'm sure they're gonna know the answer too. And I wanna take a moment here to say that, you know, while we're thinking about children's librarians, we do have an uh, excellent staff of children uh, so we have a children's librarian and um, youth services staff, and they are working right now on uh, story times. They're doing live story times. Caitlin, Caitlin and Natalie are doing live story times every Tuesday and every Friday at 10.30 a.m. So make sure you check that out uh, on our Facebook page. They're using Facebook Live. Um, oh, try not to write the uh, answer in the chat room there. <laughs> 
Um, but they're using uh, Facebook Live. Kate, Caitlin and Natalie are using uh, Facebook Live to uh, do story times Tuesday and Friday, 1030. And just in general, I want to make sure people visit our parents and kids page on the website where we have videos, we have blog posts, we have activity ideas uh, for folks who are looking for something to do while we're all stuck inside. Um, and we have Hoopla book lists. So there's audio books, uh, ebooks. Um, there's even some, some movies on Hoopla. Uh, and we have links to some outside resources too for you guys to check out. Um, so keep that in mind for those people with little ones in their house. Okay, whoops, question eight. In 1540, uh, Thomas Cromwell, I don't know if I have the accent right there, a protagonist in Hilary Mantel's recently finished historical fiction trilogy was executed by which king? So in Hilary Mantel's books, this person was executed by which king, but in real life as well. <laughs> so who is the king that executed Thomas Cromwell? Also, I want to mention here uh, that speaking of kings, we have a lot of fun British content on Acorn TV. So make sure you visit our website and check out a resource called Acorn TV. We have uh, world-class mysteries, dramas, comedies from Britain and beyond. Um, it's a little bit like Netflix. So there's shows on there called Doc Martin, A Place to Call Home. Vera, Agatha Raisin, and the Murdoch Mysteries, which I think are also books. Um, and they are adding shows weekly. They are adding shows weekly, so be sure to check that out. Um, there's also uh, The Great Courses, and The Great Courses offers over 150 courses taught by the world's top professors on subjects ranging from photography to physics, history to health, and everything in between. They're about 30 minutes in length. I've seen a few, they're pretty, they're pretty good. There's one about language, the origin of language. Um, all of these are on uh, RB Digital. So both Acorn TV and great, the great courses are on a resource that we have called RB Digital, which is also where you can find magazines, um, including the New Yorker. For those of you who are looking to read the New Yorker but don't wanna pay the subscription, we got, we got you covered. Um, so be sure to check all of those resources out on our website. All right, question nine. What is the name of the famous book club started in 1996 that has selected titles such as Heroic Measures, The Pillars of the Earth, and An American Marriage, among many, many, many other titles? What is the name of the famous book club started in 1996 that has selected titles such as Heroic Measures, The Pillars of the Earth, and An American Marriage. Oh, yeah, so I have some question there. Oh yeah, yeah, I have some questions there about how you answer. Uh, so I, I want you just to answer at home, and then at the very end, we're gonna go through all of the questions with their answers, and uh, it's an honor system. So you're just keeping track at home, um, and the second half of this, trivia, you'll see the answers, and then we'll just report your scores. So it's just an honor system. Keep track at home. Um, I see some of you are messaging me privately with the answers. That's cool, too. Just make sure you don't show everybody else. Did that answer your question? Cool. Yeah, we are honorable. I, I agree. I think I know who those two are, and I agree. <laughs> All right. So moving on to, oh, yeah, I wanted to make a point here after this question to mention that, um, you know, please check out our e-resources for ebooks. We have Cloud Library, we have Hoopla, we have Libby slash Overdrive. Those two things are the same. Um, and again, just RB Digital. Uh, so if you're looking for titles to read, check those out. We have a bunch of lists that we've created too to help people navigate those. All right, we're gonna take it local. This Detroit born, born singer was subject of a 2020 Michigan notable book. What is her name? So this Detroit-born singer was subject of a 2020 Michigan Notable Book. Uh, what is her name? And I believe the titles for Michigan Notable Book were released just shortly before the uh, coronavirus descended upon us. Um, but the Detroit-born singer, we're looking for her name. All right. 
for all the dog lovers out there, um, I know we have at least one dog lo lover online. <laughs> what breed of dog was Buck from Jack London's Call of the Wild? Um, what breed of dog was Buck from Jack London's Call of the Wild? I believe it's the same in both the movie and the book. So that might help you out if, if you, uh, you recognize a dog from the movie but haven't read the book. <clears throat> okay, so Mark Twain is said to have predicted he would die when this appeared in the sky. It also appeared shortly after his birth. What was it? So something appeared in the sky shortly after Mark Twain's birth, and it's that same thing that he predicted would be around at the time of his death. And actually, he was right about that which is kind of freaky, but um, other things in the sky are the sun. And tomorrow at 6 p.m., we have a talk about solar energy. So please check that out. That's going to be also on Zoom. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., we're partnering with Michigan Energy Options. Uh, John Sarver, who is part of Great Lakes Renewable Energy Association, will be uh, talking about solar energy. So. If you're interested in that, um, that's tomorrow at 6 p.m. You can find the information on our website. It will be a Zoom meeting just like this. Um, so please be sure to check that out. Okay, question 13. This year marks 100 years since women won voting rights in the United States. It also marks 100 years since this prolific mystery writer published her first novel in the United States. What is her name? So we're looking for the name of the person who published her first story in the United States 100 years ago this year. OK. Known for her songs, No One and Girl on Fire, which 15-time Grammy Award-winning music artist just released a candid autobiography. This person just released her autobiography uh, right before we shut our doors and everybody else shut their doors. Um, you can get a copy of this autobiography on, uh, on our digital collections. We're looking for um, her name. Okay, so in 1842, uh, this soon to be public, oops, sorry, this soon to be published author traveled to boarding school in Brussels with her older sister, Charlotte. I'm not sure where the accent is. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, what is her name? So in 1842, this soon to be published author traveled to boarding school in Brussels with her older sister. What is her name? Uh, we're looking for the name of the um, younger sister of Charlotte. Speaking of school, uh, I want to mention that we have plenty of activities right now for teens. Every weekday at 1 p.m. Um, we have teen time and you can go to our website. The link is pretty, uh, pretty clear right there in the teen section. Uh, 1 p.m. every day, every weekday at 1 p.m. there's teen time. So if there's teens in your life and your household that are looking to hang out with other teens, this is an opportunity for them to do that. Uh, also, every Wednesday at 3 p.m., um, they're playing video games online together. Uh, this is every Wednesday at 3 p.m. That information is on our website. Um, and if anybody has any more information about that, they're welcome to throw that in the chat room. Um, but that is going to be every weekday at 1 p.m. and then video games every Wednesday at 3. Sixteen, Margaret Atwood published uh, a retelling of Shakespeare's The Tempest in 2016. What was her book called? So Margaret Atwood, who you probably know from The Hammond's Tale, published a retelling of Shakespeare's The Tempest in 2016. What was her book called? That is a retelling of The Tempest. Looking for the name of that book. Okay. 
All right, 17. Roxane Gay is an author who once gave a TED talk and later published a book featuring the title phrase, bad what? So there's a phrase, two words, bad what? In the title of both her talk and her book. What is the second word in that phrase? All right, question 18. What famous American author opened a bookstore named after a Greek mountain? We're looking for the name of a famous American author who opened a bookstore uh, that is named after a Greek mountain. Question 19. In 1939, John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath, which a lot of us probably read in high school, was published by which company with a seafaring name? So I'm looking for the name of the publishing company behind the 1939 release of classic American book, The Grapes of Wrath. Another thing that you can attend uh, virtually through the library is Books on Tap. So many of you have probably heard of this. It's one of the longest running, if not the longest running, library-led book clubs in, uh, in the area. Um, normally we have Books on Tap at Jimmy's Pub. Obviously we're not gonna be doing that, but we will be doing it virtually. That's April 14th, 6.30. Books on Tap is meeting April 14th at 6.30. And they're gonna be discussing um, a book called In the Woods by Tana French. Um, so that is an opportunity for you to talk about that book if you've already read it or if you want to read it between now and then. We have it available in our digital collections. Check it out. Come join us for that chat. And 20. What is the name of the pipe smoking detective created by Sir Arthur Do Conan Doyle? What is the name of the pipe smoking detective created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. All right. We will now move on to the answers. And everybody has been keeping track. Any final questions about anything before we move on to the answers? All right. So the supposedly only uh, literary landmark for alternative culture <laughs> oh, yeah, is uh, City Lights Books. City Lights Books is the name of the bookstore founded by Lawrence Ferlinghetti um, in San Francisco. It's a great bookstore. Check it out if you ever get the chance. Sorry about the folks who missed some of the first uh, questions. All right. The movie that was based on a book by Christine Leonens is Jojo Rabbit. And the book is actually called Caging Skies. And like the director, uh, she is from New Zealand. So Jojo Rabbit is the name of the movie based on Caging Skies. All right, so the South African writer who released their, one of their recent books in Spanish before English, even though it was originally written in English, causing quite a stir, um, is J.M. Coetzee. Um, and his book is called The Death of Jesus, or Jesus, because I think the person is in a Spanish-speaking country. But um, check that book out. It is now released in English, but he did release it first in Spanish. And a lot of people were very upset about that. I don't know why, but they were. <laughs> or read it in both languages if you can read both. All right. So the next question is, or the answer. Whoops. So who wrote The Curious Case of Benjamin Button? That is F. Scott Fitzgerald. F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote this story, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, released in 1922. Also a movie. All 
Okay, here's the one that surprised me. Um, Arthur Miller, known for writing Death of a Salesman, married which actress? He was married to Marilyn Monroe, which I actually didn't know. Um, I don't know if that means I'm not cultured or what, but I did not know that Arthur Miller was married to Marilyn Monroe. So that was, yeah, that was an interesting fact. Um, number six, who is the Colombian author known for news of a kidnapping? Um, the General in His Labyrinth and Clandestine in Chile. That is... Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who you might know from uh, uh, 100 Years of Solitude. Um, but I wanted to pick some titles that you might not have, uh, might not have noticed. News of a Kidnapping is, um, well, both News of a Kidnapping and Clandestine in Chile are actually nonfiction because he was trained as a journalist. So those are some interesting books. If you get a chance, check them out. Yeah, we have some comments there. Kristen is showing off her literary prowess. She did know uh, about Arthur Miller and Marilyn Monroe. I'm happy, I'm interested to talk to her about that later because I, I want to know the goss, I want to know the gossip about that. Um, and she's rereading 100 Years of Solitude. Um, I should probably reread that, it's been a few years. It's a good book. So this former children's librarian uh, is the first African-American and first woman to lead, oh yeah, to lead the Library of Congress. Who is she? And that is Carla Hayden. So Carla Hayden is the current librarian of Congress. The library, she's the head of the Library of Congress. She's the first woman and the first African American to have that position appointed by President Obama. Yeah, Station Eleven is probably not the best book to be reading right now unless you're just really want to get deep into pandemics. <laughs> Although I heard that, a lot, that on Netflix, everybody was watching all the pandemic movies a few weeks ago. <laughs> all right. Who lapped off the head of Thomas Cromwell in 1540? Uh, that was Henry VIII. I'm not really sure why. I don't know what their beef was. I don't know what happened between them, but that sucks. <laughs> um, check out Hilary Mantel's trilogy. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. I think the last book was just recently released. Um, so if you're into historical fiction, that's a, that's a trilogy to check out. What is the name of the famous book club started in 1996 that has selected titles, Heroic Measures, Pillars of the Earth, and American Marriage? That little club is called Oprah's Book Club. So I believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, that that uh, book club selects a book once a month. So we're talking about a lot of titles since 1996. Um, pretty powerful book club uh, in terms of getting attention. So something to keep your eye on. Okay, keeping it local, this Detroit born singer was the subject of a 2020 Michigan notable book. What is her name? Aretha Franklin. And I'm screwing up the PowerPoint. But Aretha Franklin um, is the subject of a book called, ah, keep messing up my PowerPoint. The Queen Next Door. Um, so Aretha Franklin is the subject of a Michigan notable book recently named as such called The Queen Next Door. And I think it's mostly photography. Um, there's a really beautiful cover image of that book of Aretha Franklin. I think she's wearing like Barrow-ish um, outfit. It's kind of interesting. So check that out. Check out the, the whole list of, uh, of um, notable books. You can find that on the Library of Michigan website, I believe. And also check out um, our director, Kristen's podcast with the author of that book. That I believe is on our website, or Kristen, if you wanna throw a link in there for that podcast, um, but I believe it's on our website. So check that out when you get a chance. 
And it turns out her son looks like went to MSU. I didn't know that. Okay, for all the dog lovers out there, what breed of dog was Buck from Jack London's Call of the Wild? What breed of dog was Buck from Jack London's Call of the Wild? Jack London's Buck was a St. Bernard Scotch Collie mix. I am not a dog person, so I have no idea what that means, but uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a bunch of words to describe one dog, but Buck was a St. Bernard Scotch Collie mix, both in the book and in the movie. Okay, Mark Twain is said to have predicted he would die when this appeared in the sky, and it also appeared shortly after his birth. That is Halley's Comet. So this is a true story. He um, was born a little bit around the time that Halley's Comet was in the sky, and he died uh, at the time that Halley's Comet was in the sky and predicted that was gonna happen. So that's kind of a crazy story. All right, so 100 years ago this year, 1920, women won the right to vote after much struggle and protest. Uh, and it also marks 100 years since the prolific mystery writer published her first novel in the United States. Her name is Agatha Christie. And the book is called The Mysterious Affair at Styles. So I had no idea that that was how long ago she started writing, but um, she published her first book in 1920. Okay, who wrote a very candid autobiography recently and also won 15 Grammys? That would be Alicia Keys, and her book is called More Myself, A Journey. Alicia Keys just released a book, More Myself, A Journey. I believe we have copies of it digitally, so check that out if you're interested in that. Supposedly there's a lot of nice gossip in there, so if you're into that, check it out. All right, 1842. Um, these two sisters went to boarding school. Uh, both of them were authors. We're looking for the younger sister. That is Emily Brunte. Emily Brunte or Brunta or Brunti. <laughs> Emily Brunti. Um, they went to boarding school and then became very famous in 1842. Okay, so uh, you may know Margaret Atwood for The Handmaid's Tale. She also, in 2016, released a book um, that is a retelling of Shakespeare's The Tempest. That book is called Hagseed. So if you're interested in a retelling of Shakespeare's The Tempest from the perspective of Margaret Atwood, check out Hagseed. All right, Roxane Gay gave a TED talk and, and later published a book featuring the phrase, bad what? Feminist. The book is called Bad Feminist and the TED talk is called Confessions of a Bad Feminist. Check out both of those things. Uh, I think we've got tons of Roxane Gay stuff in our catalog in digital collections, so check those out. She's pretty cool. Okay, what is the name of the famous American author who opened a bookstore named after a mountain? That is Ann Patchett. She has a store, I think it's in North Carolina. I'm not sure if someone knows, feel free to type it in there. But she has a store that's called Parnassus Books. Um, and it is named after Nashville, there you go. It is named after a Greek mountain, which I think is probably significant in Greek mythology but I'm not totally sure. Um, so if you're ever in, looks like maybe Nashville, check out that book. Maybe you can see her and get an autograph if you're interested in that. What is the name of the publishing company that uh, released The Grapes of Wrath? That is Viking, which is now an imprint of Penguin. And they're also the company that released In the Woods which Books on Tap will be discussing on April 14th.
Okay. Who is the pipe smoking detective that was created by Sir Arthur Donan, Conan Doyle? I don't know why I keep saying it. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. That is Sherlock Holmes. Supposedly it's based on somebody in real life, but um, I have to follow up on that to be sure. All right. So I'm interested to know how everybody did. Why don't you go ahead and report your scores there in the chat box. Um, if you have any, if you missed one of the answers, let me know, I can go back. All right, we have Hannah and Lindsay with 14 out of 20. It's not bad. We got eight out of 12 from Beth and Liz, 17 from Kristen, seven out of 12. I have, I had Emily, but changed saying, oh yeah, okay. That would give me an eight, uh-huh. All right, did everybody report? Okay, I think we heard from everybody. Um, it looks like Kristen takes the win <laughs> for 17 correct. Um, congratulations to Kristen. I don't know if you wanna share some victory, a victory speech, Kristen. <laughs> no, but I will tell you, I was fascinated with Marilyn Monroe for a period of my life and um, went read about her being married to Arthur Miller and um, very rocky kind of marriage. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. And Carla um, Hayden is the first actual librarian in over like 60 some years to be the Librarian of Congress. Not only the first woman, the first African American woman, but the first librarian in decades. That's a good point. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I had forgotten about that. Because mm -hmm. yeah. before, I think they were all like historians and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're we're happy to have her at the lead of the, um, what is essentially the National Library. So we're happy. Yeah, to have and her. just a, and so she came from the Baltimore Public Library, and was um, given many many accolades and awards because during the um, riots. Um, after Freddie Gray's death, she kept those libraries open so that people had a place to go and that people could get water and diapers and food. And she kept those, even though people were coming down the street thick and, you know, bombing cars and stuff and, you know, fire bombing things, she kept those library branches open so people could have a safe place. And she was appointed by Obama and she knew Obama because she worked at Chicago Public Library. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, I don't think I have much more to announce to everybody. Thank you for, for playing. This was our first time trying this out. Um, if you uh, want some more direct links to some of the events and programs that I tried to mention while we were doing this, um, I'll type my email right now. Go ahead and reach out to me. Um, and uh yeah looking forward to seeing you guys around at some of our other virtual programs thanks for coming <laughs>